typically a test route is approximately 35 minutes about 10 to 12 miles depending on which route you take and how long it takes you and whether you uh, take a wrong turn or not so typically today we're going to go over um, what really a test route looks like so it's very very similar uh, to a test route it may or may not be uh, identical to a test route um, I want to go through a couple of things with you making sure you understand them too um, what you saw there is typically what goes on on a road like this there was a black coloured Range Rover the car in front of it did a half and half so it was in the whole back position the Range Rover didn't know what the what the car was doing and overtook it then when the car in front of us let the other car the red car go the Range Rover was already committed to overtaking the red coloured car so the the driver of the red coloured car didn't look into the mirrors when they pulled back out and that's why the Range Rover horned um, it's very normal in this area it's a very uh, busy area lots of deliveries and uh, people simply don't look in their mirrors often enough or traveling too fast so anyway uh, we're going to go over um, something that looks more or less like a test route so it may not be um, uh, uh, an identical test route but it's very similar to the area that you'll be going through um, what obstacles you may come across um, and you and I are going to have a bit of a chat while we drive through it so I'm going to get myself ready to go I've checked my mirrors I can see a red car committed and uh, there seems to be a cluster of vehicles with him these are the cluster and I'm looking at the white coloured car in front of us now the white coloured car possibly will slow down and now it looks safe I've applied my signal I'm going to move off so I'm going to make my way down this road um, I'm going to get to the roundabout now I do a lot of routes on this road and I turn left at that roundabout it's a very busy area the roundabout is a very dense roundabout it works very very quickly so whatever action you're going to take at that roundabout it has to be quick so you have to see it you have to find an opening as it evolves then once it develops you take that opportunity rather than waiting for an opportunity opportunity to kind of open up once it's opened up it's too late you're just not going to get it because by the time you set off by the time you find your biting point in your own car be it a manual or whatever that'll be too late even on some uh, automatics so the roundabout is clear I'm going to check my mirror as I come off now what I'm doing is I'm readjusting my vision in terms of how I see the road and I'm adjusting my vanishing point so I'm constantly aware of what's coming up this road and what's going around this road and what's leaving this road a little bumper here because I'm on the sort of mid middle of the road they're widening this road or the building a complex they've only just started this now so this has happened while we were in lockdown now the speed limit on this road is 40 it was adjusted a few days ago to 20 they've now removed the 20 sign for whatever reason but you travel at a speed that's appropriate for where you are I'm watching this Jeep and I'm watching this um, the van sorry and this car turning right I'm now looking at the red traffic lights and where the red car just turned off so I'm now looking in my mirror seeing what's in the right hand side lane what's approaching in the right hand side lane and it looks safe I can move across that lane's moving faster than this is less cars
in my automatic car, I have auto hull set up. When you're in your manual or with the manual handbrake, apply the handbrake, relax. You don't have to, it's just safer to. So now I'm looking at these cars that are gonna turn right, whether the back of this car is gonna stick in the road, so I'm not gonna go that fast. Now that I know I can clear it, I'll carry on. Now in some cars, they have what they call a, a FCA, forward collision assist. Every car that was made after 2019 has it standard now. You'll find that it'll start bleeping if you move too quick while he's turning in. If that's the case, you must come off the gas. Otherwise, if you're going above 20 miles an hour, the car will stop. I'm now going to do a U-turn on this roundabout. I'm going to come back down this road. So I'll check my mirrors, get my signal on. Now, this is a very fast-paced roundabout. Again, it's looking for an opportunity to emerge. I'm now going to take um, the maybe third, let's say second, third, fourth road on the left. So as I'm going down this road, you'll see um, a slip road. The slip road is just past that orange sign that you can see, you can see it developing now. So I've got my signal on now. I'm not going to push my car in again. So nice and easy, checking my mirrors, making sure there's no cyclist. And if you can't fit in, you just wait wherever you can. Lamborghini. Should be teaching one of them. I'll turn left where the car's emerging from. So we can see that sign there, so it's warning me that there's a crossroad. So be careful, somebody may come out and may not see you. In fact, no, I'll tell you what, I'll take the one after. So I'll adjust my position now. Can't see into the road, I'll slow down a little, especially with a parked vehicle. As long as it's a reasonable speed, that's fine. I can see the new speed limit. You'll see although the road is completely clear, I'm cautious when I'm coming out. The reason why I'm a little cautious there is really because um, it could be, there could be a car coming down, there could be a fast paced car, um, it could be coming, um, it could not see you, you know, it could be someone driving uh, a stolen car, it could be a cyclist, a motorcyclist. So you have to be careful when you're traveling in this area, especially where there's no cars. I'm going to turn left here, you'll see the bollard and the parked car. 
So I may have to take a wider turn to get in. So I'll move my car a little to the right, checking my mirrors, traveling at an appropriate speed, and gently traveling to the road. I can go over the line, it's safe, I've had a look. And the speed that I'm traveling at is reasonable. And there was no other option, I had to go over the line. So don't be afraid of going over the line as long as you've made sure it's safe to do so. And it's exceptional circumstances. Do the car park there. We'll see the transit van coming up. He was there before me, so I'll just gently slow down. He's come through, I'll carry on. So I'm now gonna turn left. Now when you turn left at this at the end of this road, there's two lanes. One goes down towards town and one is where this silver car's parked. So when you when you stop here, when you look to your right, there's two lanes, there's two active lanes. So don't push your car too fast, you'll scare people. They'll stop, you'll fail your driving test. So keep the car to your side of the road. Remember the speed limit is 3030. I'm now going to turn right at the roundabout. So I've got to make a lane change first, and I'll start that now. Look safe, do my mirror checks, and I've done my blind spot check. I can see the speed limit change in the um, in the distance. Roundabout looks safe. You'll see I reacted immediately when I saw the uh, the lights change. How did I react immediately? I come off the gas. Coming off the gas, coming off it slower, whatever. It's an adjustment you've got to make. Um, make it too late, you'll scare your examiner. Make it too early, you'll frustrate drivers behind you. So make sure that the action that you take, it affects people in the correct manner. We can see the cyclist there as well. Especially a young child. So now, this man, this, this driver's making progress, but not at the pace that I want. I can go quicker. I'm looking in the right hand side lane. Seems to be a lot of traffic. However, I think we can make progress. And I'm looking for a safe gap. I haven't got it yet. Now, the driver behind me has given me a gap. How do I know he's given me a gap? He's maintained a constant speed, so I've assessed that it was safe for me to come out. I've now adjusted my speed, I'm travelling at a safe speed. And when it's safe, I'm going to go back into the lane on the left. I can see that triangle, that warning sign, is telling me that there's traffic lights ahead of us. What I do is I look at people braking. If they're braking, I mean the traffic lights have changed colour. And there we are. Again, I'll adjust my speed. And the reason why I don't play any music in uh, my videos anymore, <laughs> I got a, a copyright strike, well, warning, whatever, from um, uh, YouTube. So um, I'd rather play my voice or give you running commentary 
or James O'Brien on LBC. Um, um, that's okay, I can play that. I can't play any music because then I've got, it, it goes under copyright. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn left at the roundabout. Now this is a, a faster it's a faster paced roundabout it's a high dense roundabout but it's a smaller roundabout that means that the decision you make it must be made when you are physically ready to come onto the roundabout now if you don't understand what that means you need to speak to me so if you are not ready to be going onto that roundabout do not make that decision to go on so if your feet are not ready if your car is not ready then don't because you'll fail your driving test safe because the gaps that you get on that roundabout the opportunity that you get the window of opportunity is literally one second literally so if you don't take it where it's there then you're not going to get it you're certainly not So it's very important that if you see the gap, see it developing, and as soon as that, that window of opportunity arises, you take it immediately. And this is another roundabout. We're gonna go ahead at this roundabout. Now these roads you will be traveling on with me. For your driving test um, so you're, you're familiar with the area again it's not guaranteed that you'll get these roads on your driving test but you'll be traveling around this as long as you're familiar so I'm looking there's nobody coming towards where I am making sure I'm in the correct lane to go ahead which is this one here and I'll follow the road ahead so that is a roundabout despite what you feel you can see him going over that line that's lazy driving that's why it's important that you um, conform your driving and that you have some sort of lane discipline. And the speed limit has adjusted again. So it's changed. It's now 2020. Now the reason why I'm constantly making you aware of your speed limit changes, it's important that you're aware of how fast that you how fast you're traveling. And yes, you will fail your driving test if you are speeding. And you know, it's not just failing your driving test when you're speeding. Um, it's silly, you'll kill somebody, you'll hurt somebody. I'm traveling at an appropriate speed. Um, I'm in my teens, so I'm uh, above 15, below 20. Now this road bends to the left and you're on the wrong side of the road, which is unavoidable. So you watch out for the uh, for the Lewis Hamilton wannabes and also genuinely people that are on the wrong side of the road because they have to be or on the correct side of the road depending on how you interpret it. I'm traveling at 17 miles an hour which is a reasonable speed. Now because it's a quiet road and there's nobody here, people tend to drive faster on roads that there's nobody on. So be careful of people crossing the dividing line and people generally travelling too fast.
you'll see that I let that car come through. Why? Because he was committed. He was here before me. And to be fair, if I don't let him go, um, he's in my path. That van should wait for me. There we are. And why is the van waiting? I was committed. I was already here. So again, you've got to see this. Const the road that you're on will constantly update and you need to constantly update yourself so you're aware of what's going on, at what time and with who. going to go ahead at this roundabout look at how I position my car and to the left there's actually two lanes here you can if you look carefully you can see the line that's splitting them it's like a natural oil spill and to let these guys know where I'm going I'll signal the car behind me conformed when he realized I was to the left I'm now going to turn right at this roundabout. So I'm going to go back really, uh, essentially the way I've come. I'll start my routine from here. When you're going around this roundabout, make sure that the speed that you're traveling at is appropriate for where you are traveling too fast and you'll you'll clip the roundabout if you clip it you'll fail your test you'll also damage my car i'll now start increasing my speed as i'm increasing my speed in the distance you can see a green traffic light that means possibly go red on me so i don't want to travel too fast because then i won't be able to stop you can see now Traveling at a reasonable speed. There we are. I'm braking heavy, but I'm cushioning my brake and I'm checking my mirrors at the same time. So, if you don't understand what cushioning your brake means, you are not paying attention to your driving lessons with me. And now that I'm the lead vehicle, uh, I'm checking my mirrors and watching out for, uh, for emergency vehicles, cyclists motorcyclists, um, pigeons, uh, birds, whatever. Um, I'm actually looking out for anything that could affect me when I'm moving off, in all seriousness. And I'm also looking at when my light goes green, whether it's safe for me to move off. Sometimes some people go through red lights or they were late to move off and they've just committed or they were going too fast and they couldn't stop. So when you do move off on a green light, make sure you're aware of these people. Now I'm checking my mirrors, looking out for anybody, and it's fine. I'm now going to gently increase my speed. So now as I increase my speed, the white coloured car in front of me is slowing me down. So I'm going to move out if it's safe. So I'm not going to go any faster until I can actually get out, and that's fine. The white car referring to was this one here. So I'm travelling at an appropriate speed and now everyone's stopping. So I've put my hazard lights up because all of a sudden we've stopped very, very quickly. Because I've had to hit my brakes hard. And that was just to make people aware that I'm going to stop very, very suddenly. Road works, eh? Now it's perfectly reasonable for you to go in the left, stay in the left hand side lane and merge further down. Perfectly reasonable. You find a safe point and you just come in, no big deal. 
but don't get stressed at other people doing it. It's it's, it's okay. You know, you can breathe. The only thing you have to watch out for is because your car's a learner car, they're gonna think that you and the car behind me is so close. So I'm watching this driver now. I'm watching what he wants to do. It's all right if he wants to come in, as long as he doesn't force his car in and gives me an option. I'm quite happy with that. And it's perfectly legit to go into the left lane and merge at the end. You can do. There's no issue with it. It'll say merge in turn. And what somebody's done, and I'm looking in the left hand door mirror, and what somebody's actually done is uh, they've blocked the lane. So they've stuck their car halfway out to stop people going into this lane and coming across. Which, to be fair, um, is wrong. It, it causes traffic congestion. You know, use both of them if you want to. We could have come in around here. No big deal. So don't get stressed if you can't come in. And we could have come in over here. And you'll see that. I'll take that back. No, you can't see. I'm looking in my left door mirror as I'm travelling along this road. The reason why I'm looking in there is if there's an emergency vehicle, um, I'm trying to work out where he's coming from. Uh, and the safest and the easiest and the fastest way would be on the left. And there's a player on the left now. He's my kind of guy. And he's done it right. He's just come right to the end and he's turned in. And you can hear their motorcycle. There we are. So I'm looking out for these guys as I'm travelling, especially in slow moving traffic. You'll find that it's perfectly legal and it's reasonable for a motorcyclist to filter through. Filtering is when they kind of waddle through um, slow moving vehicles. If we're going less than 20, they can kind of nip through. No big deal. It makes you want to buy a motorcycle. Uh, a motorcycle, sorry. And the blue arrows, you can see that they're mandatory signs, they're commands, they're positive signs. They're telling you, go to the left or go to the right. So if you're turning left, you follow the blue arrow on the left. You're going ahead, you follow the blue arrow in front of you, as in the one that's pointing technically to the right. And if you're turning right, you'd go to the far right side lane and turn right. As it starts to open up, you'll find faster moving cars. They'll be behind you and they'll want you to kind of get out of their way. Now, generally speaking, when there's road works, you'll find traffic speeds have been reduced. Why? Because traffic's congested. 
it's moving very very slowly so be aware of that when you're driving and start checking your mirrors more often when you're in traffic jams like this this will possibly be here when you are having your driving test um, we're only a week away now so it will be here you know they're not that quick uh, this is in Hong Kong or Japan or something so you know you'll find these guys parked here so it's important that you're checking your mirrors especially when it opens up, when the road, where the road opens up. So the road opens up where traffic finishes, so it'd be somewhere around here. So be aware of faster moving cars and people going into the appropriate lanes. I've moved back into the lane on the left, I just find it easier. Why? Because I'm not really struggling, I'm not bothered what other people are doing. I'm travelling at a safe speed. When you're in the right hand side lane, the, the lane that goes ahead, because both these lanes do, the faster cars tend to come across and because they're faster cars what you'll find is uh, they'll be constantly very very close to your car so I'm looking for a safe gap and there's one here again these roundabouts what you've got to make sure when you're traveling along this road is that your car's actually ready to go so the, your car has to be ready and I don't mean you know, or, you know, your engine's on. I mean, literally, you know, it should be that point of a second where you're moving your foot up, I don't know, one millimetre, and the car should start launching forward. Because if it's not, the gap that you're looking at, it won't work. So what I'm going to do now, for the sake of argument, I'm going to go into the right-hand side lane. I'm going to follow this road down. Uh, I'm going to keep up with traffic. And um, I'm going to merge with the lane on the left. Now, it's something that you need to be aware of. So if you're in the lane on the left going down this road, normally you will be doing. Um, or, if you're lane, or if you're in the lane on the right. If you're in the lane on the right, you have to merge with the lane on the left. If you are in the lane on the left, which is where this van and this black car is on the left, um, you, where the... They're all bloody black, aren't they? All, all these cars. Where this van is on the left, um, <coughs> what you'll find is the lane on the right has to merge with you. So you have to be aware of these cars, as in the lane that I'm in, you've got to watch out for these guys. So let's say for the sake of argument, you're in the lane with the registration YE65ZFZ. You have to watch out for me that's merging with you. But if you're in this lane that I'm in now, I have to merge with you. It means you have priority over me. How do we know? When I go over these lights, you'll see that arrow for me pointing to the left. That means I've got to merge with them. That means I have to give way and somehow make my way into there. So I'm looking at the floor markings and it's there. So I put my signal on, I'm looking in my left door mirror and I've gently gone in. I can see that cyclist, whatever he's doing, running across in that little moped, uh, the little scooter. Why did that matter to me? Here's your 20 sign, and that means I've got to drop my speed. Now it wasn't on the opposite side, um, so I reduced my speed slightly. Here it's 20, I'm afraid I've got to do 20. Let's finish. It's about 40 again. So I'm now going to turn right at the roundabout. So I'm going to gently start moving my position across anyway, check my mirrors, and now I'll start my routine for turning right. So I'm watching the red car, the one that's coming to the roundabout. Now I'm looking at the second red car. And that's how far around the roundabout I'm looking. That was this one here. Check my mirrors. And now I'm going to take the next road on the left. This 
which is another road that moves very very quickly what i mean by that is it's like lots of buses go up and down this road people travel quick on this road it's a wide road but all of a sudden it narrows down or there could be somebody doing a maneuver so it's a road it's a road used quite often on your driving test by driving instructors and driving examiners it's where we normally do your parallel park so it's very important that if you're traveling along this road that you're aware of them it's an iphone 11 so the stabilizing isn't as good as the um, good one i was using i was using a, a samsung obviously samsung are better but i'll stick to my iphones so I'm going to take the next road on the right. It's a very narrow road. It's where the brown car's coming out from. And if you didn't see him coming out. So what I've done, I've moved my car slightly to the left to let, make sure that this blue car could go. And I've traveled. Now I'm watching the red car emerging. on this road is 20 and uh, because I can't see down the hill I'm driving quite cautiously so I'm moving my head making sure I can see that road I can see the van coming up so I let the van come up no big deal and there's a car behind him so I'll adjust my speed appropriately so I'm not stopping I don't need to but I'll adjust my speed appropriately so I'm going to take the next road on the right now this is it's a very difficult road to deal with why because you can't see down the road so I'm making sure I can see as much as I possibly can before I travel into this road. I'm travelling at a reasonable speed. I'm looking at the red Audi, the red coloured car at the end of the road. So I'm looking as far as I essentially come. I'm now going to turn left at the end of this road. Check my mirrors. Get my signal on. Looks good, looks safe, looks clean. Again, it's a narrow road, although it's, I'm on the correct side of the road. I'm going to turn right at the end of this road. Got to watch out for anyone travelling in, into this road. Normally, it's delivery drivers, UPD or DPD, whatever they're called, UPS. Now, this is another very busy road. It's a narrow road, so if there's a bus coming up the road and you're turning out of this road, you need to be very careful how you do that. Coming out, keep looking both directions, straighten up, look in my rear view mirror, make a reasonable speed. There's the UPS. So I adjust my speed, I'm letting the big van come through. That's the UPS driver, rider, driver, no, he's a horseman. So it's a commercial area, Horsforth, so you'll find lots of people doing deliveries here. There's a lot of businesses that run around here. So now I'm going to park the car somewhere near the test centre. Now the test centre was essentially where I started this video off from. So it's where this Costa sign is on the left. So I'm going to put my signal on here. And I'll gently start slowing down here. And there we have it.